Hey guys, today's video is about being an automation and electrical technician at a food processing plant. And what's an automation technician? An automation technician repairs and maintains the computer controlled systems and robotic devices used within industrial and commercial facilities to reduce human intervention and maximize efficiency. Their duties require knowledge of electronics, mechanics, and computers. My previous job was an automation and electrical technician at a big food processing and, uh, plant that we've probably all heard of. And being an automation electrical technician is very similar to being an instrumentation technician, very similar to being a controls technician. They're all kind of hands-on engineering uh, jobs and they all require pretty much the same set of skills depending on which company you're at. Different companies are gonna call the job a different thing and expect slightly different skills from you. So at this job, I had three categories of work. I had calibrations, repairs, and scheduled maintenance. And honestly, for me, it was split up about, you know, one third of my day was spent on each. I had a bunch of calibrations I had to do every month. And at this particular place, the calibrations were not extremely standardized. The tolerances were pretty wide and it was pretty laid back, but the calibrations took up a lot of time. And uh, some of them I had to do scale calibrations on you know, high weight scale. So I had to lug around 50 pound weights quite a bit. It was pretty hard on my body, but uh, overall they were pretty easy calibrations. Uh, repairs, so the types of repairs I did were electrical repairs, controls repairs, power issues, instrument repairs, and then PLC and network repairs. So long story short, when something would go wrong, they would call me. Generally speaking, the maintenance technicians would respond first because my time was set to prioritize calibrations and projects I was doing for the engineers. If they were having trouble or if it was taking too long, I would step in and you know go with them and help fix the problem. Usually they would call me if there were some confusing controls issues, weird electrical issues, you know, if they suspected there was a network communication issue or just anything that's a little bit more electrical and automation based rather than just a mechanical issue. And scheduled maintenance, I mean, it is what it is, scheduled maintenance. Uh, replacing batteries, just replacing stuff basically, doing PMs, tightening wires, you know, working as an automation or instrumentation tech, you're going to have a work order system that's going to auto generate work orders that have to be done every six months or every year. And those are going to be sent to you and you'll have pretty much an open schedule to get those done whenever you can. Before I move to a typical day as an automation electrical tech, I'll go through, I'll just pick a random day and go through what I did that day. I'd like to let you guys know, I did make a merch shop. It's pretty cool. I made a couple t-shirt designs, nothing fancy. I put a little bit of work into it, nothing crazy. I'm planning on building it more later, but I'll put a link in the comments. You can check it out, see if you like it. So on this day in the life, I went in and the maintenance guys called me over. We skipped the meeting and there was an issue going on where a couple sensors were not really working. There were proximity sensors and they were going in and out. They asked me to come check it out. And uh, I opened up the panel. It was in a very dirty room that had a lot of water, a lot of corrosion. So I looked at the wiring and saw a lot of daisy chains in there. We poked around for a little bit, tried to test the sensors. Like they said, they were going in and out. So what I ended up doing was just going through and tightening up the wires and that resolved the issue. Then after that, I had to jump on to um, CIP calibration of conductivity probes. So they're just probes that measure the conductivity of a liquid solution. And I, you know, I just have my standards that I would dip the probes in and document. Uh, you know, so I went over, I got suited up. I, I put on all my chemical protection stuff because I was going to be working with caustic materials. Got my little cart, all my calibration equipment, got my procedure, and I walked over, um, locked out the process. So, you know, fluid wouldn't spray on me when I took everything apart. I detached the probes and used my different liquid standards to test the accuracy of the probes. So basically I take the probe out of the process and I would have a standard with a certain level of conductivity. I put that probe in there and let it settle out and document the calibration reading I was getting. And you know, I put that, fill out my calibration form, put all my readings for my different standards on the calibration form, 
and if you know they were out of spec i would either calibrate the unit or if it was really damaged or if there was anything wrong with it i would replace it i don't remember if i ended up doing that or not i know that those probes would go bad pretty often so most likely i replaced it and then you got to do an initial calibration on the unit let's see here and then after that i got called off to for a group of valves that were not functioning properly in the other cip room uh long story short this is the room where all the chemicals were dosed into the clean in place system cip is cleaning in place they they you know shoot uh, caustic liquids through all the machines to clean out all the food and the bacteria and they rinse them out and it, it just makes everything very clean and sanitized so anyways the other CIP room they were having an issue where like the valve for the caustic tank wasn't opening and a couple different valves weren't opening so I went in there and I poked around and I looked for the issue looked at the HMI screen couldn't really find anything and that one pretty much just came down to looking around at different equipment, figuring out what wasn't working, looking at the device, seeing that there was power to the device. There was no mechanical binding on the valves. Uh, they were pneumatic air controlled valves. And again, a whole group of them wasn't working, which tells me there's some sort of most likely controls issue, maybe a PLC module to open and close the valves. And sure enough, the solenoid block that communicates with ethernet so you have an ethernet cable coming into a block of solenoid valves that open up valves to energize the other valves with uh air that solenoid bank the port on it was not communicating properly due to corrosion again it's a very corrosive environment very caustic environment so i actually on that one i remember i just had to pull that ethernet cord out of the port i had to pull the ethernet cord out and just put it into another port on the module or maybe it was the switch in the room but regardless that was like a quick fix that if i remember correctly it actually did take me a little while to diagnose that and then for the rest of the day i went back and completed my one conductivity calibration and moved on to some scale calibrations for the day and that right there is a pretty typical day you come in and um you're not really that supervised but you have a list of stuff to do and the top priority, when something breaks and you're trying to get some equipment back online, you gotta run over and do it right away. And for me, I always, when I had the opportunity, I would go to see how people fix stuff, see what what breaks, you know, I would wanna see something get fixed. So for the next time it happened, I could go out and handle the issue quicker. Uh, so I was always tagging along on repairs, whenever stuff would go down, if I could, I'd go check it out. And. Uh, Anyways, so I want to discuss the level of difficulty, level of supervision, and overall job satisfaction of this role. Um, as far as difficulty for me, as far as physical difficulty, it was pretty difficult because that place was pretty chaotic. We were short, sh short staffed like the whole time I was there. I was on second shift, so there weren't that many people. It was kind of a skeleton crew, and there's just a lot going on most of the time. And the hardest part about it was just having to walk across a factory over and over again throughout the day. Um, at that particular job, I would walk about eight miles a day. And that was that's definitely a little bit above average. And I think that job is a little bit more chaotic than what most automation or instrumentation tech jobs are. That particular job was pretty difficult physically. I also had to do scale calibrations, which involved you know, lifting up 50 pound weights and putting them on a scale. Every month, I had to lift up 10 different 50 pound weights and put them on, I think there was like 15 scales that I had to do every month. So that, that wore me down a little bit. I lost some weight and I got gained some muscle work in there. So just keep that in the back of your mind. I would say that that job's a little bit more difficult than most jobs, but there is some stuff like that going on at most of these jobs. So you might wanna just look into it. And as far as mental difficulty, I would say it is a pretty challenging job. The good thing is, is when you go home, you don't really think about the job. There's no stress. There's no, you know, phone calls off shift or people pressuring you for a report. You go in, you work hard and you leave the job at work. But there were a lot of times where things would get really chaotic or, you know, equipment breakdowns would be very difficult to solve. And I'd have to use all the resources that I had to figure things out. And a lot of times, especially being on an off shift, 
everyone was kind of looking at me for the answer. So at times it would, there was a little bit of pressure, but honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, the longer you're there, the easier it gets. But these types of jobs can be a little bit, of cha little bit challenging at times, just because a lot of people will depend on you to fix stuff. Um, level of supervision. So like I kind of said before, I worked with the maintenance department, but I was not part of the maintenance department. We kind of worked side by side. They were a lot more structured, their job, their days, their supervision, it was all much more structured. Whereas I was kind of off on the side and I actually worked for the engineering department and reported right to a automation engineer. And um, you know, in that particular role, they kind of stayed out of my business for the most part. I would help them on some projects but for the most part, I kind of just did my own thing and waited for people to call and ask for my help. I had a, a lot of, you know, I had a big list of stuff that I had to get done and I just prioritized my time without really checking in with anyone else for the most part. And for me, that's something I really like about it. And overall job satisfaction, I would say that I would give the job an eight out of 10 just because there is a lot of challenging stuff and there's a lot of stuff to learn there's responsibility, people respect you, and it's just a challenging and fun job overall. It's a little bit too difficult and a little bit too chaotic sometimes. Those are the biggest negatives. But for the most part, I think it's a great job. Um, I don't think I have a lot more on this topic, but I really appreciate you guys checking out the channel. I have more videos on instrumentation and electrical technician roles. So check out my channel, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.